Welcome to Weekly Wings, your go-to podcast from DroneLife.com, where we soar through the latest in drone technology, regulation updates, and exciting innovations. Each week, join Samuel, Terry, and I as we navigate the drone industry, offering expert insights, interviews with key figures, and a bird's eye view of how drones are shaping our world. From commercial applications to recreational adventures, Weekly Wings delves into how these remarkable vehicles are impacting delivery services, agriculture, construction, education, filmmaking, and much more. Whether you're a professional drone operator, hobbyist, or just drone curious, tune in to stay informed and inspired as we explore the heights of what's possible in the world of drones. Subscribe now and never miss an episode of Weekly Wings, where the future is looking up. Welcome, everybody, to another great episode of Weekly Wings. How are you doing, Samuel? I'm doing well. Doing well tonight. How are you doing, Paul? I'm doing well myself. Had a had a great 4th of July, a very busy week, very exciting. I know Terry uh, had a trip out of town, so... Won't have Curious him joining us on this to Denver episode. to go see some uh, drone light shows. I don't think I he made it that far out. That. Speaking of, yeah, speaking of drone light shows, uh, this this week's episode we'll be diving into drone light shows, considering it was, uh, you know, the Fourth of July this past week. Huge day for celebration, entertainment, gatherings, fireworks, drone light shows, drone light shows, and fireworks. Um, we're going to dive into the success stories and even one uh, big epic fail. Uh, and then moving on from a light show topic, we'll talk about the Ukrainian drone industry. An article came out. We've talked about it a, a little bit, but uh, a little more information is has come out in the past week. So we'll dive into that and maybe discuss how it could be mirroring the United States. Uh, we have a pretty neat video. We were... We'll be able to show of uh, the NASCAR Chicago street course that was done by drone. So that's really epic. The visuals folks are able to get of these sporting events. And then we'll wrap up this week's episode in our regulatory corner discussing North Carolina repealing the NCDOT permit, as well as a TFR that went into effect that actually postponed a drone light show. So lots to unpack uh, we'll dive right in. Kind of a follow-up here is what we're going to kick off with is the Denver Drone Light Show. Did you, did, so you didn't go to Denver, Samuel? Huh? I did not fly out to the lovely state of Colorado. Not this time, no. But it's great to see other people got some great videos and photos for us to take a gander at. Yeah, so huge gathering here. Um they were calling this Indie Eve, like instead of Independence Day, it was uh, celebrating uh, Indie Indie Eve. So this was Denver <laughs> uh, Indie Eve, and we've got the video up here in front of the Capitol building. That kind of looks sick. Just watching it go right now. D As I was watching, wa and this video is, is amazing. It, it, it gets blurry here. It's actually how it's been uploaded, so it'll straighten itself out but when i was watching the video just the drones uh, launching and getting into position right and then also when the drones land like the launch and recovery process of the drone light shows is is so epic it, it looks like what soldiers in uh in a formation it does yeah Twinkling red, white, and blue. Big crowd. It's it's really neat. You know it's going well because you, you things are going in a very neat, orderly fashion. They get up. Oh, here everything went up. That three D visualization, and then the one thing I also notice is is the air traffic. See right now going through the center, we're looking at a, a what is that a rom not a rhombus uh, not a shapes guy here. 
you see the aircraft, you can see the taillight, the flashing anti-collision light. Um, the airport, probably just about 30 miles from here. Yeah. How about those visuals, Samuel? That's very impressive. Sorry, it sounded like there were fireworks going off, so it was a little distracted. But yeah, that looks very impressive. They have a... Uh, it looks like it, they visualized a line by presetting all the drones and just flashing the lights. It's very well synchronized. Yeah, pushing the... Pushing the lights through. There you got the Colorado. Denver, there we go. Love that. That is a D, right? I know that's playing into the Colorado flag, but... Yeah, and that one drone, did you see it totally fall out? I, did, I was... I think I missed that part. Yeah, watch when the flag... When the flag, there's a... There's a one of these right here, just gonna... Right here. Oh, see, there it you just go, dropped yeah. out. I wonder if he collided. Abort. Abort. <laughs> you could see it drop. Yeah. So again, the safety factor here is operating these drones over a confined area uh, where if they go down, it's, you know, low risk. But, okay, Blucifer. Yeah. So here we go. <laughs> I Anybody had pleasure. Who's... Yeah, right. Yep, Blucifer. So what anyone familiar with the, the old Denver airport, Blucifer, right? The statue outside of good old Denver airport there in Colorado. Uh, what is it? The, the story, oh. the, the legend goes, there's the, U, the UFO. They just the missed artist UFO who day. made Blu Just missed it. The officer, or the officer, <laughs> the uh, artist that made Blucifer, the statue outside the airport, actually died uh, because Blucifer fell on top of the artist and killed the artist. And that they is still so put it out. Up. That's cool, Mountain. So I'm just going to skip through here. It's, it, this yeah. is really cool. You've got uh, um, the flag, state flower, I believe that is, um, Liberty Bell. And these so are 15 these minutes here, USA, images. Red, these are White, things Blue. that are actually moving. Or they have some form of animation with the lights yeah. going on. Yeah, and then here they like they like all come back together, and then like the, these ones. I don't know. Maybe they have like those ones go down quick, man. I don't know what that is. Kind of to, like maybe it just is like a super low battery. Like if the battery has just got to the point where it's this is a because like of those. these ones are just dropping, dropping. Yeah. Oh, just a couple. Yeah. Everybody else is like that one popped back up. He's like, ah, I think yeah, everyone else falls into place and marches back. To me, and this is this is like one of the. Go ahead. Well, I was gonna say it's crazy. I, we've consistently seen these shows, and for each one, it seems like they never pop up a second fleet. It's always around sixteen minutes or so for the time of the video. Yeah, and I'm just kind of curious yeah. if I don't know if people are gonna stay at just one fleet or if i don't know how well synchronized you can pop up another set of drones but you, what were you going to say and, and right so i wanted to play this video because what we've got here is uh why right, it's a company popular time to travel doing it fly with us? we got graham, graham hill, hill here right so uh, up graham hill family this is what it looks like yeah. um, he's heading with on a higher uav pro 500 drones as his luggage we're going to uh, California, California, uh, Delaware, Delaware another show on the sixth up in Johnstown, Colorado. Colorado. Uh, we have one in the Chicago. Like area. four places, Chicago the area the within a few Denver days. Higher UAV Pro designs drone light shows for communities nationwide. What Jonah's doing is building out the whole visual timeline. As more cities turn to designs like this instead of fireworks. More and more young people and more and more animation, and blender, kind of right, creating the show. The logistics will involved. Be from Denver's celebration for the first time as Indie Eve becomes the latest show to move from fireworks to drones. So we Higher UAV Pro did that show let, we let, were just watching. Out. Let's try this. Let's see how the community reacts. Right. They did the show we were just watching. 500 drones. You got to get that you know move those things animate it this is what you've seen in the past with um fireworks i, I believe it was graham hill right with higher uav pro 
Um, That's crazy. But just Three really cool to also red, see this. white, and blue stars interlocked in themselves, turning in different ways. And so it's kind of like when drones existed for photography and real estate and inspection, battery flight times was 20 minutes, 22, 25 minutes, 30 minutes. Now it's 40, 42 minutes. So whether it's a second fleet, like you mentioned, um, which is kind of hard. Once you get 500 drones, it's kind of hard to say, well, we're going to do 250 and then 250 because the, the picture you can paint with all 500 up is just so much more significant. Right, because it's going to imagine like adding another five hundred to have to go and do all that. And, and, and so you're almost being able to charge, right, for the detail that you can provide versus the length of the show, right? I don't think because twelve minutes is is a pretty significant amount of time. It's like three songs, like a st- traditional four minute song. So Going into a 30-minute drone light show, I think we'll get there. But just wanted to highlight, again, higher UAV Pro because I think everybody's saying, like, who's doing this? How are they doing it? Um, and what these articles in the Denver show and, and what they shared about traveling and showcasing it and putting – you could see each drone in that video had its FA registration number. Um, I just thought that was really cool. I guess it. my kind of question is like what type of waiver you're going under because that's technically, I mean, how what, 500 drones under one pilot? So it wouldn't be one, like if you go back, let's see if. uh, Going to have to dig into the 107 right now, huh? uh, Not dig into the 107. I want to just go into this video because I think. What you'll see is like a handful of folks. Um, if they show, they might, maybe they don't. Well, here you'll see. Right, so here you can see you got one person, a second person, antenna here, antenna here. So it's not just one pilot. Uh, most likely, what you're going to see is the waiver is going to be written for. Uh, this specific system in this location, no people, the drones aren't moving across streets. They're not moving across populated areas. The people are staying here. And then you're going to have, I think like one router, depending on the system for every hundred drones. So if you have 500 drones, you actually have to set up five routers that you're then porting into, uh, not just a single computer, but two computers, because you're going to have two laptops side by side in case one fails or crashes in flight. It's all backup and redundancy. So it's kind of like two pilots, two GCSs, all in a very confined uh, environment. So you're right. not beyond visual line of sight. You're mul- multiple, right? Multiple SUAS is pretty much like the the primary waiver makes sense at least for my just kind of going off the top of my head here so in uh, in addition to the positives there is also go go ahead i was gonna say with your personal experience getting a waiver you know yes some of that uh just going off the 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 top here but in addition to the positives there are some negatives too samuel comes hand in hand can't have your cake and eat it too did you did you happen to look it up at all like I just typed in like drone light shows around 4th of July and it's, I, I, <clears throat> I was going to start counting just to say like, it'd be interesting to say, Hey, in the year 2024, there was uh 47 drone light shows between July 2nd and July 7th. Hmm. Right. And then in 10 years, how many drone light shows are there going to be? Like how big is the market? And if Who you actually look at how many light, shows, light occurred, shows that are coming around, the companies themselves probably if they're doing their their business diligence but i also thought it was funny because you say 2024 can you believe in like eight years 10 years people are going to be like oh remember in the 20s oh god 
<laughs> oh. Holy shit, right? Yeah, that's... Like, feels... you think of the 20s, and you think of, like, dap, dapper me up, ah, 20s, <laughs> ah, the, the roaring 20s. And everybody was yeah. buying stocks and reading newspapers. It's, uh, it's very surreal to think that's literally a hundred years ago and now we're in another set of 20s but god can't shake that feeling now yeah because you don't really say the teens like you're you're not like oh remember the teens like remember the 19s <laughs> the 19 teens you don't but you go the 20s what was the 20s like what was the 30s like so we're we're we're, we're Years away from people actually referencing the twenties and 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 not in the nineteen ways, but anyhow, I just I thought about that the other day. Back to the negative on the drone light show. So so as I mentioned, right, you can see here this neat photo. Yeah. So you see the laptop. You got all the connectors and the plugs and nice computer. You know, I think here, handful of drones. This looks like maybe a demo test setup. A little seltzer yeah. water here toolkit. <laughs> Um, aesthetically pleasing. We're in photo. Seattle. Yeah, we're in Seattle for this one. It's hard to and, even say it right. Forty thousand dollars the same drone guy, show. It? Not the same company. Right. Different okay. company. Different company. Forty thousand dollar drone light show. So of course some drones fail. It doesn't work out. Everybody's gonna go. Oh, the city wasted forty thousand dollars on a Fourth of July drone light show. Uh, show oh they voted and they decided not to do the fireworks and there's this whole article here how someone wrote like oh well thank goodness that the privately funded fireworks still took place oh my goodness hmm yes what happened drones appeared to be appeared to be attempting to form the image of an american flag but before the image could fully form the drones began falling from the sky Many of the confused onlookers first thought the dripping effect of the falling drones was part of the show. Mm. However, as more and more drones began to fall, it became clear the show was a technical failure. You ready to see the video, Samuel? I want to see this video. I want to be enlightened with both possibilities, the good and the bad. All right. You ready? Hit me. This is epic. And it's above water. So here's the thing. Remember we talked about mitigating <laughs> mitigating risk, right? Where would there be less risk to people, property? Well, we could do the show over water and hope people aren't hovering in their boats. A little harder to kind of cordon off water, but let's just play the video. Epic, epic. So the Fail. dripping effect begins. Look at that one. Oh, God. Oh. Falling that was is like not a two an foot exaggeration. Splash. That is... There was a splash. That was a significant splash. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's weird, too, because it's not... There's... Calling them all home. It looks like chaos, which is nothing like the other drone shows we've seen. The other ones had that... Like the last one we just saw, they were all going in this line and following where they need to go. But this just looks so chaotic. Look at this. Oh, my. Pew, pew, pew. Like yeah. falling stars. I mean, what a show. Can you imagine having so to go fish those nailed. things out? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um... Speaking of fishing those things out, so oh this boy. this happens, right? <laughs> this this happens, and um, like you said, the chaoticness of it. The uncon can you imagine the pilots, the operators <laughs> trying to get the button to make it work? Right? <laughs> can only imagine what they're just seeing on their freaking end out. The yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just like everyone's freaking watching. like like the operators. Oh, you get them off the ground. Because remember the show we went to? I wasn't even the operator, but I'm sitting there thinking like, <laughs> like, you know, oh, time's really ticking here. So they, they're always talking about how like the time, the time takes by. You get the drones up in the air. You're like, oh, yeah. And then it's like, well, you know, small victory. And I just could not imagine 
the uh, the pilots. And especially yeah. if like the owner of the company was <laughs> if the owner of the company wasn't uh, on site having to make that phone call. Yeah. Uh, I don't even know what you would lead uh, with. Just it. Well, so have some bad yeah, news. we put the drones over the water for for <laughs> safety purposes. We we did it over water just in case. <laughs> so I mean, no one was I hurt ended though, up that we on, can see, right? I didn't hit anyone. No one's to... hurt that we can see. Yeah. And so, two hundred drone light show is what it was reported as, with fifty five drones being lost. That's what all the different articles and postings that have come out. 55 drones lost. That's a uh, tens of thousands of dollars. That's so, as crazy. I'm trying to as I'm trying to find video of this, where do I end up? On Reddit. I thought you were going to say X. So, I'm on Reddit under the Seattle and I'm reading this and I'm like yes and I'm going okay is this the same company that was the last couple new years IIRC they've had I recall problems correctly. every time um and so I know the company name is up there and it's out I'm just I don't need to say it but then so yeah. as I read to the comments I'm like, all right, this is the world, or not the world. This is like, this is the America, right? Go fish them out and put them in a bag of rice. Uh, just throwing trash into our waters. Hazmat considering its batteries. It's a smaller scale analog for the Starlink satellites that are polluting our atmosphere and killing the ozone layer when they fail. So I'm reading through these and... Uh, I don't think they're fans. I'm, it's, I'm just laughing. It, yeah, a bunch of drones collapsing into the lake like dead birds is a great analogy for the state of America at the moment. Oof. <laughs> Oof. I'm like, this is... They did not. The automated wallies actually take care of dead drones. I forgot about that They, line. like Washington's unnatural decomposer. <laughs> yeah. So... So then I get to this one, finally, and I read this, and you said fishing, and I'm like, the fact that you said fishing, I'm like, all right. So the, the, the comment here is, what a coincidence. I was just recommended to the Reddit uh, thread, Magnet Fishing, and Samuel, hmm. I'm like, do I click this? So, Have of course. You, you've been there before, right? I clicked. You've seen the videos? Magnet fishing? Yeah. This is a big thing. No. You, no, you can find like guns. You can find all sorts of stuff in the rivers. Like it's crazy. People like throw whatever in there. <laughs> and I get like the algorithm so when understands I just, my interests. Okay. So when I literally just said magnet fishing, you already knew yeah, what I was yeah. talking. This is not, so this is thing. not even new to you. So how, Bikes, so our audience yeah. is probably familiar with magnet fishing. I bet Terry knows. Don't have, gonna, you have ki All right. Well, if you have kids, you just stop learning new things. Like I was, uh, I can't even remember. I can't even remember what the, the thing was that I, it was like a song or a something of, of I, my wife, my wife said, that came out two months ago. I'm like, holy uh -huh. shit. All right. So, so, but one really cool photo. I'm like, yo, this is such a thing. When people are posting pictures and, and saying, hell yeah. <laughs> and then the picture is just a photo of a box with a pan stuck to it. Like, yeah, look how strong my magnet is. Yeah, that's this uh, is hilarious. On brand. Got an ad. So when are you getting your magnet? I, you know, I don't, I'm not close enough to a river. We, if <laughs> I was in a different place, I think I'd take it up. Cause you can find some really cool stuff there. I mean, you could go find a drone now, you know, go check it in and reel it back and see what you get. It's crossed my mind. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. That's a, that that's so a very funny. good. Uh, well, and then I clicked on it. I was going to say, go ahead. Very good. What? Uh, 
a very good representation of like, yeah, things can go really well and you can have a great show, but then things can, I, I want to know what happened specifically. Was it an error with the software, the hard, it looks like software because that, that many drones failing, like, do you think they lost connection? That's what I'm assuming. GPS. So the articles yeah. that I read into said, said there was an issue with the, the GPS. Yeah. But I tell you this, and then the other thing is, so then I end up on a Facebook group. Apparently, there's a North Carolina mag magnetic fishing <laughs> group um, that is actually active. <laughs> Where, I'm out of curiosity, do they so, have a central location? I don't think they have a central location. I'm, I, I did not. I just, I had to, I was like, all right, that's, that's enough. It's enough. <laughs> Um, but but one last thing, Sky Element, so drone company that got the golden buzzer at America's Got Talent, which we, I believe, recently showed, put on quite a show at the uh, PGA July 4th celebration. So really cool here. Great video. Again, you can see that awesome box, right? The, the formation that it mm. launches from. Look how many people are out here. I mean, this is a gathering, food trucks. This is... Uh, pop up tents. This is the fu- it's not the future. This is now. Yeah, we got a drone videoing it, but just another another great show by another proven you know company, Sky Elements. How these companies are going to scale and 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 how many, you know how how much more uh, cost uh, accessible do the systems become? All that is is yet to be told. But um. I just can't wait to see it. These things just take off and they go up and they do some really amazing, amazing stuff here, Samuel. What, what are we seeing? Seeing uh, spelling out PGA. In Texas. Yeah, Frisco. Frisco, Texas. Bob, Texas Frisco, is little popping little off, DFW. With all the drone stuff. Oh, that's beautiful. Looks like, like that, that wave? Texas. I've never seen a drone animation that clean. Holy cow. I think it's because of how close they are together. It looks like one cohesive image or animation, I should say. But that's beautiful. A waving Texas flag. And something else, too, I think. That's that's very impressive. Yeah, I love how they go dark. Yeah. I love how they go dark and they then they form up and then like this is cool. This is really cool. Ah, the PGA guy. Especially as a golfer. Yeah. And then watch the motion. Oh no way. Is he gonna like have a smooth animation? And it's almost like you want to say faster. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if it was going to do a quick, choppy kind of cut or if it would be a slow, smooth. But yeah, slow, smooth with a uh, wind streak behind the club. That's pretty sick. Oh, he's even got the ball moving. Wow. That's... And look how tight of a formation. Like, they're not wobbling. It's like holding... I'm pretty impressed too because it looked wow a whole nother image ready to go that fast those things are moving this isn't sped up is it no no wow. excuse me and then you've got the ball the ball rolls into the cup and from and then our they perspective, do this little thing the at cameraman the end like the is kids. moving the camera across the area, but you can still clearly see what the image is for the drone show. Like, there's not a substantial yeah, and that's difference. Sky Elements. Sky Elements. The Texas out of North Department Texas. of Housing and Community Development. So they're the uh, AGT, America's Got Talent Company. So, boy, of course, you know, being that you know, drone light shows are just so fascinating. And it was 4th of July week. We had to go in with a solid 
25 minutes of uh of drone light shows and we're not even done there right we're, we're still in, we're still going to talk more of light shows in the regulatory corner One what we do want to move into move on, though, here is i was gonna say is like i yep most of the drone stuff that we see and have interacted with in my opinion has been prime for summer activities i can actually see drone shows going into the winter with you know people do christmas lights you know just walking through a christmas lights area or driving in your car to see christmas lights i could see an animation thing with drone lights or like santa flying through with drones that would be sick that would be so cool can you imagine seeing santa claus made out of drones would love that anyways sorry i just was thinking about the possibilities it's not going to be just a summer activity not just the fourth of july it's going to I think it can translate to the other seasonal holidays, which is goodness. Or just like not even the light, not even lights, but think of like the future of being able to, I just think of Dick's Dorothea Dick's park in Raleigh where they put lights all over everything. And then you kind of drive through, right? Um, Just think of the potential for like a drone reindeer. Like a right. Rudolph the Red Nose drone, Ooh. and it is built for that purpose. Or it's a skin. What if it's a skin that you can put on specific drones that have 30, 35, 40 minute flight time, and you could set it on a path, and it becomes a part of that whole Wonderland or the the show, the you know the the uh, Halloween scary. You can have a ghost shell. That well, you it's kind of funny. It. I think Universal is actually doing stuff with that. They, uh, they're they talking about their new theme park and whatever. They're incorporating all this technology. I think they're going to incorporate like drone and autonomous machines in one of their new rides just for it looks like an actual creature coming up to get you. And it's like, that's so cool that technology is doing that. But yeah, sorry. That's crazy. A lot yeah, of and once you add, once you add the lights... Once you do add lights, if it is at night, so you could still have these moving rotors, but because the 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 thing the the object that it's it's blended in, so I don't know that'll, that'll be neat here for it. Uh, Ukraine, I think it was just last week's episode. We With were Darwin talking about yes, yes, with Darwin and how there was those folks. Uh, I think it was that. Um, that woman who is making like five drones uh, a week in her house. So this article came out, um, foreignpolicy.com, how Ukraine's drone industry took flight. Ha ha ha. A state campaign that rolled back red tape and regulation inherited from its Soviet past. So the... You know, why is this interesting? Well, we're trying to see a uh, industry, drone industry stood up in the United States, uh, but but struggling. So mm. this article comes out talking about this individual working for the Ukrainian government as a financial analyst by day but in the evenings and on his weekends him and his friends are making drones for the army so now i'm like oh a million drones and here's this so they're volunteers with a 3d they're an enthusiast sorry jumping the collective yeah Yeah, you're good 12 volunteers their time they raise money for the components on a crowdfunding platform Hmm. and they have a volunteer with a 3d printer Uh, they make these in a key workshop and then they send them using commercial shipping to the front lines so they're used they're crowdfunding they're getting people to donate money so then they can volunteer And where are they buying the components from? Alibaba, Timu. 
I wonder how many of those components they can actually China. craft in house. Because I mean, yeah, you can make certain parts with three D printer, but I mean, PLA plastic is very. It's not. I don't know. It can get the job done, but it's not the most precise thing, you know. But you've seen these drones. They're going to go and they're going to fly, and and they're they're going to get to Darwin, right? <laughs> these are drones yeah. that are going to Darwin, and so unlike large Ukrainian producers. This amateur collective re- receives no government funding, but is benefiting from the government's campaigns that says, hey, support small businesses. And so as you continue to go through here, it's just. Right. 200 registered companies are making drones in Ukraine. Hmm. And industry insiders count more than 500 producers if you include the smaller firms and volunteers in garages who are supplying troops with hundreds of thousands of drones a month. So is this a, what happens? What, like, is this an industry that's being stood up or is this like a lesser developed country trying to fight at all means necessary? Because when you're reading this and you're saying, well, they stood up this industry. Why can't the United States? Yeah. Uh, they really, they, they went to town on it, didn't they? And they're saying here, a handful of manufacturers before the war made drones for agriculture uses in the IT sector. Uh, well, you mentioned they're the a major, whole, so they're trying to say, the... well, they were doing lots of drones. Yeah, I was going to say, you mentioned where they're getting the supplies part. I mentioned the printing. But even with the printing, you're still buying the plastic from somewhere else, typically Chinese plastic. Like all this. Yeah. It's pretty fine. If we had to stand up, do you know that I... (laughs) Yes, but do you know how many people that you, you work with probably could do the same thing? Like if the United States had to... You know, but we have Rogue One. We have these drones with warheads that are five grand. We have like, I, the people listening to this could be making these things. So if we had to, this is like, again, I think I said it. This is like going back to the American Revolution when you were cobblers and farmers and like, like everybody had a day job and was doing something else. And then overnight we had to fight for our freedom and Mm. we didn't have the resources and we were melting things down using our own firearms, right? Taking our own metals from our houses in order to create munitions and things of that nature. And if we had to use FPV drones, I could crank five of these out in a week. Can I say you got money and all of a sudden now I have a company? <laughs> it's kind of crazy, isn't Go it? Go ahead. Nah, I was just going to say you got to you got to teach me how to do that. <laughs> and so it, it goes back to our, you know, we got to bring Tony on. We got to get we got to get Tony on the, the this next uh next episode really cuz um again, he's going to tell is you some type stuff. of thing that I was going to say, he's going to tell us stuff we probably had no idea about. You know, I bet he's into magnet fishing. He he will know about magnet fishing. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a couple of magnets in the car. Yeah, probably um, just ready to go. And so then just to... And, and so as, as you read further into this, you realize that... That their corporate taxes for Ukraine companies doing drones is 9% instead of 18% where other companies in in Ukraine are paying the 18%. If you're an employee that works for a drone company, right? These defense companies, you're only paying 5% income tax instead of 15, 16, 18%. They're doing all these things in order to incentivize folks to manufacture these drones without just handing them money because there is a, an initiative, Brave One, providing grants to drone manufacturers. And so 
it's capped at twenty five thousand dollars, which is not not a ton of money. I mean, if you think of a U.S. company you said twenty five grand, they might laugh. It's kind of you know, it's 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 crazy. Um, right. And then these photos pop up in the article and you look and you're like, oh, that's a DJI drone. Hmm. Someone didn't make that. All these photos that end up popping up of, of um, not these here. Yeah, but. But like the news, the, the main pop-ups are DJI drones. I, I do feel like DJI has been the poster child for the drone image, you know. Typically, that's what people associate it with anyways. From my experience. Now that's an image. Right, Ukraine service members. See all them in the box right there and here and here and here and Are those zip ties I see on so the it's volunteers. Left? Uh where? Looks like no, I think those are antennas. I was looking at the box behind him. Oh yeah, those are all antennas. Yeah. Had to take a closer so, look. Oh, so I think you can actually see uh, one of the 3D printer spools in the top right near the window. That's crazy. I think that's what that is. Or it's some type of wire. Yeah. Huh. Very. <laughs> that's crazy. A reasonable bomber drone. And yeah, and, and, and so then you find out things like, well, they can't export these drones and so some of these companies want to start exporting the drones that they're that they're manufacturing and they're it's um it's pretty intriguing and interesting and it talks about you know overcoming gps jamming and how much is being learned and ukraine is on track to produce two million drones um and then you say, how do they do it? What are they making? How is this significant? And they're getting R&D. And, and then you just go, well, it's people like, uh, you know, Vlad Zavlov, Ripko's <laughs> volunteerism and crowdsourcing. It's, it's all very, you know, it's all ties to... To the war and the conflict. And I think we've seen that in years past and decades past with our own government where you have conflicts arise and then dollars get spent because every troop that goes downrange, you know, every soldier, every U.S. soldier that goes overseas downrange in a combat zone, you have a packing list. Hmm. You have to have all these items. You have to have your, uh, you know, bulletproof armor vest. You got to have your, your, the inserts that actually stop the bullets. You got to have your Kevlar helmet. You got to have your X number pairs of pants. And so like when you break that down, you say that's dollars that costs something. So a company that makes the Kevlar inserts knows, well, if X number of troops get deployed, then X number of things need to get um, issued out to those soldiers. So it's huge dollars. Every soldier is not just being paid, but the cost associated with the equipment and the food. And it's crazy. Money moves. So we're seeing... A Ukrainian drone industry take off, but the, the the massive amount of what they're manufacturing isn't going to support, you know, a, a commercial aspect. And you say, oh, well, we could manufacture different drones, right? And in reality, making those FPV drones that, you know, fly, that Darwin can fly precisely with, you know, not made for video or imaging is different than creating software, infrastructure, IP for a drone that's going to compete globally with DJI. And that's what's trying to be done in the U.S. So I hmm. thought that was an interesting article. Definitely shine some light on kind of what their lives are looking like over there, at least for some of the folks. 
and then it ties in that Darwin, uh, the um, Darwin aspect, right? Like where it was kind of funny because we last week we talked about this individual um, uh, flying these drones and where are they coming from and, you know, how are they getting there to now be able to see this other part of the picture? And it's like, oh, it's volunteers and some other folks that are not all volunteers, companies manufacturing stuff. But I'm, I'm curious to, to try to peel things back and say, well, if these people weren't volunteering, how much would that drone actually cost and could they afford it? Because right. if they couldn't, if the answer was no, then that industry isn't isn't for real. Yeah. So switching gears here. Did you know NASCAR is racing in the streets of Chicago this weekend? This I week? did not. I do know that uh, NASCAR introduced a EV prototype, but that's a little... That's a little different than what we're looking at. Yeah. So street racing, NASCAR now uh, in recent years has uh, become more consistent in the street racing and not just the oval tracks that most people think of NASCAR as. I think it has to do with formula racing, Indy, you know, all these, all, all racing just gaining a lot more momentum and so this Some drone insane video shots to be honest welcome to the nascar chicago yeah. street right videos chicago you ever flown in chicago i have not <laughs> i'm playing this video again i was gonna say i think i had a little uh, bit of buffer fortunately uh, just because of the camera movements, I'm like, that has to be animated. But no, that was FPV, wasn't it? That was the real deal. That was some FPV going over the cars there, showing off the track itself. And then there was also some more probably stabilized. Could have been a Sony AirP, could have been a Mavic 3, could have been a one of any, you know, many other drones that was showing some stabilized footage there. And uh, let's see, let me pause this and share it up here again. But yeah, like right here, FPV, that is real deal. They're racing right there on the streets in Chicago. Um, I did have a chance to fly in Chicago once with the Mini. I actually flew over the Bean. I took some pictures the of the bean and the skylines the bean right tires galore um yeah this is all real deal drone video right here and it's kind of cool because if it's all drone video you can get so many angles i love this above straight down to deer shots of all this activity you can time hyperlapse it speed it up i mean you can go anywhere you can get on the uh, end of these areas where you just wouldn't normally want to go show off that american flag it's it's epic just finished watching the bear it's, so i'm kind of romanticizing chicago right now so this is perfect <laughs> yeah and so like the about it too these new drones the, the fpv drones they've they've come to the point where you can combine gps with speed and stability and video that doesn't lag and you got digital so with almost one drone, you can do so many different things. And people are like, what should I do as I'm getting into drones? And it doesn't matter what sporting event you're turning on. It doesn't matter what TV show you're turning on. There's just some cool, creative drone clip. So in addition to consuming, not necessarily consuming a lot, but when you're consuming, being aware of the shots that you're seeing, hmm. like what did that person just do? What are they doing on 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 uh you know fox for the races what are they doing on cbs for the football leagues um what are they doing in this show that i watch copy that you know see the great things that other folks are doing and then go out there and learn how to do it yourself analyze um, what and you like that and see. content and just I was, yeah i was gonna say just like analyze that that's my biggest thing is when i'm 
when I'm watching one of my favorite TV shows, I like to think, why do I like this? Why do I like this shot? Especially with the drone shots that you're talking about. Some of those shots are pretty hard to get. Looking at those FPV pilots specifically. But yeah. Going through the, like you add, you add that to your bag. It's like watching somebody else play golf. You see something they did and then, you know, they mention why they did it or, you know, like, oh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to steal that. Right. In the sense of, in a, you know, in a positive way, you're not actually taking something from that person. You're, you're going to break that it down and you're going to rebuild it as yours. You're going you're to remix that thing. Right. And you're yeah. going to, you're going to ingest it and then make it better and apply it to whatever application uh, or whatever shot, whatever story you're trying to tell. Um, I'm always seeing neat stuff like that. I was doing a, two weeks ago um some outdoor photos big company they've got uh in indoor manufacturing and as i was looking at it i just thought wow there's probably a lot going on in there as they're manufacturing you know these uh construction uh, pieces i said that would probably be really cool to put a drone up inside during the hustle and bustle with everything moving and get some pictures or video it's certainly not Madison Square Garden and it's not an NHL event, you know, but it's seeing the way it's applied there where you've got tens of thousands of people and all this commotion and one, you know, one shot, one take and applying that into a more commercial application where you can be more thorough and detailed in your planning. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really exciting. So I think for folks to be able to really start to think indoor outdoor precision the technology is getting there because right. five years ago fpv drones existed but you you know everyone isn't tony and hiring a tony and getting a tony to come and travel now the technology has gotten to a point with the newest uh, fpv drones that you know we're seeing this great point in time where the folks that have the folks that were flying on evenings and weekends and like people, family members are like, oh, what are you doing playing that, you know, messing around with that thing. Now you're traveling the world, flying some of the most significant sporting events, you know. It'd be a really cool thing to say. Yeah, I got invited in to go to Chicago to fly for NASCAR, you know, like that's that's pretty cool. <laughs> At least I think so. Or yeah, my... Oh yeah, next. Where are you going? How's work going for you? Oh, well, next week I got to go to Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Just kind of. And then last that. year we're into the regulatory corner. Yeah, for the regulatory corner here for the last uh, couple minutes of of this week's episode of Weekly Wings DroneLife dot com. North Carolina repeals the drone knowledge test and permit requirement. So for anyone in North Carolina or whoever's visited North Carolina, wanted to fly your drone in North Carolina, you're probably familiar with the UAS knowledge test in order to get your operator permit, your North Carolina Department of Transportation operator UAS permit. Kind of crazy that you take and get a federal license, federal certificate, and then you have to do it. It's like if you're a pilot, if you're a private pilot, in the United States, North Carolina, all you need is your private pilot certificate. You don't have to then take a North Carolina test. So it was very strange that after passing and acquiring your federal aviation remote pilot certificate, that you then had to get a North Carolina permit. Hmm. You familiar with this, Samuel? Yeah, yeah. So it looks like June 27th is when this was enacted. So every year, two years, folks in North Carolina living here, traveling to North Carolina, you don't have to worry about this DOT permit anymore. How does that make you feel, Samuel? Kind of relieved, to be honest. I mean, not a, not a big relief, but I mean, that's, I think it's going to make that barrier for entry for some people just a little less challenging and less... I don't, I, don't, I don't know. I think once you get past that 107, it's going to be relatively smooth flights. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, it was kind of like an I gotcha, like for some people that did pass and then they didn't realize you needed to have this additional certificate. Um, kind of uh, kind of neat here. Looks like I just totally clicked out of that. But um, yeah, I think it's neat. One thing from a training standpoint, when you're working with new pilots, it's one less step that you have to explain to people. Right. It's like, hey, you passed your test. Congratulations. Now you can fly safe instead of having to say, oh, you passed your test. Now go take this exam that is you can't even fail it. Right. Yeah. It's retest until you pass. So we'll get a yay clap, clap, clap for that. That's a that's a two thumbs up. <laughs> that's a gold star. Delaware Park. That's a gold star. That's that's yeah. Delaware Park postponed Saturday drone show. So drone show that was supposed to happen July 6th, Saturday, was postponed. Why? FAA closes airspace for hmm. VIP. Who's the, who's the VIP? Yeah, the president. President Biden. Hmm. President Biden and the First Lady were hosting a barbecue Thursday night with military service members and their families on the South Lawn of the White House. According to the White House, has not yet announced its travel plans for the weekends, but between this time and this time, all aircraft are prohibited from entering this airspace. So it is believed, right, that because of this location with this TFR going into effect, that it's possibly due to the president traveling. So... Success drone light shows, non-successful drone light shows. Hmm. At the end of the day, or at the beginning of the day, whether or not you can even legally fly, sometimes is not a guarantee. Yeah. So as we talk about these drone light shows, you invest a ton of money, you get a contract, you make plans, and then all of a sudden, oh, right? Right. I wonder how you broke that news to people. The sudden, you know? yeah, the sudden VIP visit was communicated at two fifty-seven p.m. on July fourth, grounding all aircraft from July fifth to July seventh. I believe we paid like twenty bucks to get to the they were... light show we saw. So I mean, not a huge loss, but I mean that's still pretty. I'd be pretty bummed out if I traveled an hour or two hours away just to see it. In Denver, in Denver, they spent forty thousand dollars, right? So the contract was forty grand for this light show, and that right. that day was planned on that date because of the significance of it. And then imagine if that had to get postponed. Yeah, that's a. Uh, so that's here they're saying, I think July twenty. Yeah, so July twentieth. So maybe it's a free show, right? Because it says the casino, Delaware Park Casino. You know, they got money. Casinos got money, so they're Delaware Park Casinos paying. Yeah, for the, the light show, probably not charging, probably not charging for attendance. It's just a way to get people to to come to the casino. So no big deal. They just kind of check their calendar and they talk with the light show company and they're like, oh, what's the next day you have available? Oh, well, how about Saturday, July 20th? Sign us up. Let's do it. So, yeah, you know, nothing lost there completely, but. Certainly, again, even when you plan everything, you check your boxes, you make your sale, you get your waivers, you get everything in place, boom, two days before the event, TFR pops up. That is kind of a Can't weird thing fly. to have to anticipate, you know? Like, I, there's no way you can really anticipate this specific event just happening. It's like, oh, well, <laughs> what can you do except and, reschedule? And so I've joked about it, and you write that, you have to write that into a contract, Right. Mm. So not just for drone light show companies, but just for any business, any company in general. When you're talking big figures, not a hundred, two hundred, four hundred dollars, you know, do your due diligence. But when you're talking ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars, you have to say, Hey, there's you know, all these, you know, godlike, you know, if there's a storm <laughs> or disaster that's outside of our control, we're not liable for that, right? So you, you, as, a, as an aviation company, you have to say, hey, what are the risks that could cause weather? You got to have your weather clause. You got to have your TFR clause. And if you're operating in the state of Delaware right now, you definitely have to have your VIP presidential. Because I've joked, you know, we teach part 107. We talk about airspace and TFRs. 
and and I and I always say, hey, wouldn't that be terrible if you owned a drone company doing flight services in this community, and then all of a sudden your neighbor or someone in your town becomes president? Because now every time they come to visit, boom, up goes the TFR. So it is <laughs> that would so be pretty frustrating. So so funny how for folks in Delaware, you know, trying to navigate this, it uh, it's so challenging. Business, uh, you know, the the ups and downs of businesses. When I got into drones and and what I've done and tariffs and COVID and all kinds of, you know, there's always the, the, the good with the bad. And if things were easy, everyone would, would do it. And the more challenging something is, the more rewarding. So that's this whole idea of the lucrativeness of drone light shows. Hmm. It's not guaranteed. It's not easy. You got to move things. Hey, sometimes with the weather clause, you're like, well, we traveled here. We had everything in place and the wind and the rain was outside of our control. So we're not charging you a hundred percent, but we're going to charge you 30% and you're going to, you know, we're, you're, we're going to cover the cost of our airfare and our shipping. And, you know, you're still covering your cost. And that's why as drone, as a business operator and a drone business, just drone business company, you have to think the same thing. Even if you're just doing photography and video or something, Hey, if you schedule your time to be somewhere and you show up and, and there's, factors outside your control hey you're still charging for that if you mm. want to keep business and work and have a good working relationship with a uh, with this company or person then that's when you have to decide how much am i willing to eat you know like what am i willing to sacrifice in order to make sure that we can work again tomorrow or next right. week yeah you know if, so so as these drone light show companies you never want to walk away and say well we charge them full price and the drones didn't get off the ground you know how can we walk away and not have lost anything and still come back to maybe have another a customer again so yeah it's that's a really good perspective to have it from that business aspect of what what cost are you looking at well i mean you got to be able to walk away and still not be <laughs> completely maimed as a business just because you had one bad or any day or a tfr suddenly pop up so it's Good thing to point out. Yeah, man, it was a great episode. Yeah. It was a great episode of Weekly Wings by DroneLife.com this week, wasn't it? I think that was pretty good. I loved all the drone light shows, to be honest. <laughs> Leave it to the yeah. point for that to yeah, happen. Yeah, we got like a, a, a month. We got like a month's worth of drone light shows in. But hopefully, again, if you go and you look, you're going to see all over the country there was drone light shows. Whether, you know, not all of them, as we saw, were, were good to go. Um, but I think there's going to be a lot of momentum coming out of this year from the successes and then, and then going forward. I, at least I hope so. I enjoy them. All right. We talked yeah. about the Denver drone light show. We talked about, uh, Indies, Indie Eve, as they call it, hire UAV pro, uh, one of the operators at the Denver. We talked about the light show fail drones going down in the water, Ukrainian drone industry, got some opinions on that and, and, and how that's moving forward from a volunteer slash for hire perspective. Millions, millions of drones are going to get made. Just don't know if it's sustainable. Cool, cool video we saw from Chicago, the NASCAR street course, really, really neat stuff happening with uh, drones and sports and just real time uh, video this 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 crossover of FPV and cinematic capture it's really changing things up for for sports and for video production and as always we ended up this episode in our regulatory corner talking about the repeal of the NCDOT permit and how TFRs can impact your operations and a little bit of a business of how to CYA and you know make sure you're coming to agreements with your clients that you know, make sure at the end of the day, you're, you're able to cover your costs and be able to come back and continue to provide, you know, good quality service. So another fantastic episode of weekly wings, even though Terry wasn't, wasn't with us, certainly miss Terry. Terry. We're going to get Tony on. 
Yes, sir. As always, Samuel, really appreciate your time. To our viewers, our listeners, thank you, as always, for tuning in. We appreciate your time. Drop any questions or comments uh, on our YouTube channel, Drone Life TV. Also, editor at dronelife.com. You can send any questions, comments that you might have. And as always, we appreciate you tuning in to Weekly Wings, and we will see you next episode. Thank you. Fly safe.